if you pop in over time, that'd be great. One more live stream for this year. It's the last day of Shay and I's holiday. And I thought I would do a live stream. Also because my sadic has been killing me this week. I haven't even been able to sit and edit. So this week we're going to be talking about books. But not just karate books, but books that I found very useful. Not only in my karate practice, but in running a dojo. A rude tablet. In running a dojo and improving my productivity, my insight, and where I get a lot of my ideas from. So I'm going to start with this. Uh, Godjuri Karate Do, the first edition, is a desk reference. This was recommended to us by our friend William Young. Uh, it is a, this is just a chrono chronology of Godjuri. What's happened from day one? I said, nah, I knew you'd be here. What's happened from day one of Godjuri up until very recently? Um, I think it stops at 2020. So this has been revised extensively. Anyone who's anyone in Godjuri is mentioned in here, including some South Africans. And it's got some wonderful archival footage, some great pictures. Tanya! Ah, oh, the Jaguars are in town today. So I love this book. My only problem with it as someone who's got kind of cuck eyes. The font is very small. It's not dark enough. And it's in Times New Roman, which is no longer as legible as modern fonts. And I wish the author hadn't done this. I know Sensei John Paul is a very respected man in Gojiru. But... Um, like every time he mentions the word karate, he puts the kanji right after it. So it's kind of like a visual handbrake. Because every time you read it, it's English, English, Japanese, English. And I find my eyes get tired because it's like a speed bump. Um, so it's a personal thing. It's uh, not enough to stop you from getting this amazing volume. All the books I'm showing you today are available via Amazon or even to South Africans. And um, that's why I'm not talking about a lot of the other books we've got on our shelves because they're out of print or they are very difficult to find. So. First start, whether you're a serious practitioner or not, this is a great insight into the history, just the chronology, chronological history of Godjuri. A little bit of a Sewakai bias, but the author is from Sewakai, so be forgiven and understand. For my fellow instructors, I just picked this up, as you can see, um, started annotating and highlighting this book. <coughs> uh, it's just a nice insight into how to be an instructor, uh, pitfalls, the mistakes we make, how to make your teaching more interesting, how to be responsible as an instructor. He draws a very strict line between instructor and kind of like the all-round mentor figure that we have found ourselves filling a role. As society lets people down, like we do end up filling a little bit of a counsellor role. Obviously we're not professionals, but the professionals aren't available to most people either so but he does have great things on lesson planning and how to work with kids it's the same guy who wrote uh, the way of kata which everyone who's anyone in karate uh where's my copy in my karate books for beginners video i mentioned uh this book he wrote it in conjunction with one of the guys who's mentioned on the back of this book so if you're an instructor super valuable uh, book to consider getting. I will link all of these in the bio later after this video with our affiliate links for Amazon for the five six cents we earn there but well worth your time. Okay let's take a jump out of karate for a minute. Atomic Habits by James Clear. His newsletter you can sign up for and it's extremely valuable. I found so much insight when is the dojo opening? On Monday, yes, you know? So check with your mom. Um, where was I? His newsletters actually got me into reading this book and he has so much valuable insight on how to build the habits. Now, karate is essentially a habit. The habit of showing up, the habit of tying your gi properly. So he has books, he has priceless lines in here. Things like you, you become what you repeat and walk slowly but never backwards. Immense insight. So for... Our senseis are like fortune cookies. <laughs> Sensei Mario. Um, we all, who doesn't like to dispense wisdom from on high? This book you're going to find is extremely valuable in helping your productivity and how to build the habits you want. Whether you want to be more productive, whether you want to be the kind of person that gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning for a run, this is the book that will help you get there. Really, really, really valuable. Where are we going next? Back to Karate Land. My most heavily annotated book 
Um, every page on this is a gem. Um, Shay is not a fan of the author because apparently he talked smack about Sensei Chinin, but um, I still find this book incredibly valuable. I talked about it in more depth in my basics by Books for Beginners video, but I'm just open to a random page. Um, just here's one about tips about my Geary or oh, okay I like this line Terry Sensei hello hello so nice to see you so uh, when he talks about one's talent and creativity are useless unless they are channeled effectively there's this constant tension between adherence to form and learning to express oneself that provides much of the dynamic of real teaching and learning in karate or any other budo. Hello Gamba Esports, we saw you on the live stream last week as well. So this is really nice uh, reading for instructors and serious practitioners will get more out of this but that's not to say beginners won't enjoy it either. I just find that a lot of this would not have resonated with me at the beginning of my journey. I'm heading into year 17 of karate which I know is like baby baby uh, Sensei Terry who I just waved to now has been training in karate an exceptionally long time has been training with the OGs of American Karate um, so this book is for his ilk more than uh, a white belt he might be watching okay back out of karate books this hefty monster Tall of Titans by Tim Ferriss um, he interviews a lot of very interesting people billionaires tech giants it's like a little bit tech bro-ish but when there's ideas for business and marketing, some of my best ideas have come out of here. A lot of karate is about stealing with your eyes. This book has given me more marketing ideas than any other. So um, absolutely look into taking Tools of Titans. It's by Tim Ferriss. He has a, pod a podcast as well. So if you love podcasts like I do, consider downloading his podcasts. They come out every week. He talks to with fascinating people. And some very famous people and some people that are famous in their fields that uh, you might not know of but have like there was one he did an uh, interview on life design now we need to design our own lives or other people will design it for us and I really really enjoyed that so tools of Titans hefty might be a bit expensive but it's absolutely worth it okay now I'm going to get into the soft feminine books um, those are all very masculine man man books daring greatly by Brene brown she has a great netflix show please please check it out she talks about vulnerability vulnerability is the difference between a coach and a sensei it's the difference between a, being an average sensei and a great sensei because when you are vulnerable you are human and therefore people can connect with you and if they can't connect with you you can't teach them so for me one all of her books but especially dating words are hard especially daring greatly i absolutely adore this book i buy this as a gift for people and it helps us um get rid of this this armor that we have of perfectionism which yes karate instructors and practitioners i'm looking at you perfectionism perfectionism is the enemy of done it's the enemy of good you cannot be perfect and perfection is boring anyway but we feel like if we're not perfect and if we're not invulnerable and immortal and untouchable we can't be good instructors this will teach you that the more human you are, the more you embrace who you are and your natural talents and gifts. Um, hi, Arian. Um, you can't be the instructor you're meant to be. Or the student. Or, so the, the subtitle, because I might be waving around too fast. Daring Greatly, how the courage to be vulnerable transforms the way we live, love, parent and lead. So instructors who are looking to embrace their softer side because in Goju there's hard and soft. This is invaluable and it's not a long read. It's quite short one more soft book and then we'll get back into the karate Amanda ooh, Amanda Palmer the art of asking she actually started the idea of the kick she was the first to have the biggest kickstarter model for launching an album to cut out the uh, the middleman to cut out the record producers and this book is about how when you reach out people reach back and her band used to send around a busker's hat after their performances and some people felt like she was begging but a lot of people like we want to give you money not to the recorder and we've seen this as with, with some very small success with our membership program because people like to reward you for the work you do if they like you and they and they want to see more of what you do they're happy to pay 
you know, and you shouldn't be ashamed to ask for that. You shouldn't be ashamed to ask for the sale, especially when you, what you're giving away, you feel and other people feel has value. So this is a wonderful book. It was, a uh, this got the foreword by Brene Brown as well. And uh, she is one of Neil, Ga Neil Gaiman's most recent wife. They're kind of in um, limbo at the moment, but I love this book. It actually helped me in a big way quit my corporate job to become a crowd instructor. So this has a very big place in my heart. Okay, back into karate, like I promised. So here we are. Can't not mention the bubishi. Now, as you can see, my copy is also annotated. It's got a lot of highlights and writing inside. Um, funny story, Andreas Quest is mentioned on the back of the book. He shared our video on the Bunkai Supercuts on Facebook and got a thousand views overnight. And we we're like, ah, oh, he's gonna help us go viral. It didn't, but it was still it was still cool to see the impact of that one poster. And Sensei Cost, if you're watching this, thank you for punting our video that one time on the Facebook karate group. This is a uh, essential, essential. If you are serious at all about karate, you've got to have a copy of the Bibishi. This is the most recent one. Um, it's got a lot of forwards, it's got a bigger introduction and section on the possible origins of the Bibishi. I come back to this book every year because the more I train and the more I study, the more I realize that there's something new to uncover. This is a lifetime study book. Um, there's some things that a white belt won't understand. There's things that... So for all the deshis you've been through uh, under Shay, I'm deshi number seven, Brian is deshi number eight. This book is made compulsory reading at the beginning and end of your deshi ship and the difference between your first year and your third year is huge. What I learned between those three years helped me gain deeper understanding of this book. It is, the, it is a good start for beginners but it is extremely dense. I have to sit at a table with a bright light and pens and paper while I work on it. It's not bedtime reading. You will pass out. So, not that uh, Sensei McCarthy isn't a brilliant writer but it's just extremely dense reading. In my opinion, the only reference anyone needs on Honjo Undo is a. Uh, I'm gonna call him Sensei Michael Clark because he is extremely senior in this regard. And yes, I know it's blasphemous to say like that a Gaijin author is the best resource, but this book is all you will ever need on Honjo Undo. We reference this constantly in our videos. How to make your own, how to use it. It's got wonderful, neat and clear diagrams. And. I, you can make very affordable Hojo Undo, and if you are serious about being a strong karateka, you need to consider um, getting one of these. And this is very easily and widely available. I think it's been uh, in print for a long time. Let's have a look. It feels a bit like it's... Who published it? YMAA. Okay, so it's through a, tra uh, a traditional publisher. I think because of the diagrams and stuff, it's why it's such a weird shape. It's not a neat, tidy book shape. And lastly, and before I finish, if anyone wants to put any comments in the, under the video about the videos you, I mean, the books you love, please let me know. So the last one is actually not a karate book, but this book was written by a South African called Sam Beck Bessinger. Manage your money like a growing up. No, I don't want to be demonetized or disappoint my mom. So this book is the essential book we give to all the young deshis. And I mentioned it should be compulsory metric reading. This book helped me dig myself out of a financial hole. It is brilliant. If you're in debt, if you want to work on building your wealth. Uh, the reason I'm using a tablet, uh, our current day she has my copy. Hi, Solomon. So please consider getting this. Uh, parents, there is, uh, let me show you the teenage copy. There is a version for teenagers without the swearing inside the book. It's a bit of a naughty book, but I like it. The kids cover is green and if you have a teen who's interested in a side hustle, who's interested in saving, who's interested in looking towards their future, I really recommend this book. She's funny, she's easy to read. So one of the other books I've got is um, Be Your Own Investor by it's a South African accounting book. I'll think of it just now, I'll put it in the links. The problem is it's a great book but it's so dry and it's not as accessible. Whereas Manage Your Money Like a Grown Up is very accessible and it's a great read for young anyone. But particularly, please, if you are in your early 20s, buy this book. Don't make the mistakes I did. Don't be a young 20-something and make stupid money choices. 
because you want to move out the house and be big before you're ready. That's a little bit of insight into my background. Luckily, I did climb out that hole using this book, but uh, invaluable and especially. Plus one. Yeah, absolutely, Chris, our, one of our AWOL black belts. Um, financial literacy is a big problem, and there are a lot of great karate instructors who are amazing instructors and amazing practitioners, but are useless with money. And you don't have to be. You don't have to be bad with money. Remember, the reason they don't teach us financial literacy in school is that the lions don't teach the prey where to hide. There are a lot of people who benefit from us not knowing how to use our money. Any advice for the students who are higher belt that are practiced due to COVID? Wonderful question. Okay, let's see. Let me take you all on a tour of my library. Mm -hmm. uh, good entry level karate books. Uh, give us your style. If it's Godjury, I've got lots of those. If you're in Shotokan, you need to get a Dynamic Karate by Nakayama. Uh, Sensei Miguel's Dojo is named after this book. And um, this is a great, great book for our Shotokan friends. Oof. No, no, yeah, okay, let's see. Uh, obviously, oh, no, there's Stan Schmidt is South African. I doubt his books are in print around the world. It's a pity because he actually had a lot of good stuff to write. So he wrote, for our South Africans, one of the best karate books to come out of Shotokan is actually by one of our own. He died in 2019, I think. Let's see. Hmm. Out of practice. If you're out of practice and you're losing the kind of spirit and you want to get back into your martial arts spirit, then I recommend Swordmaster's Apprentice. This is actually also... Written by a guy I did Aikido with in South Africa, but only found out after I bought the book. I went to the book launch when I was working in Susa Books. So this is a nice book about um, uh, what it takes to be a real hardcore deshi. Then, it's not on my shelf at the moment. The deshi is also borrowing. It's Chojin by uh, Goran Powell, which talks about Chojin Miyagi's life and childhood. Oh, now you can all see my untidy desk. Gross. Let's see. Hmm. I hope that helps. I'll put a link to those books, but also go check out my books for beginners because there's also some other higher level stuff in there. Let me pop this back here so it doesn't look like the Blair Witch Project. Okay, I think, yeah, 17 minutes is a good time for a video. Does anyone have any other book suggestions they'd like to make or talk about any of their favorite books? I will hang around for a minute or two and then I am going to go and unplug all the internet and everything because a massive storm is rolling in classic job with thunderstorm. Senna, your time will come to read all these hard books. Remember, all the black belts in the dojo get access to the dojo library. So, one day is one day. That's one of the perks of being one of our black belts. So, Hojo Undo, we've covered financial and emotional and karate books. I hope you found this useful. And I look forward to hearing from you in the comments after this video. We will be back to our normal programming next week. Um, we're back to... Hey! Jake! Welcome! I'm one of our many Texans. So nice to see you. You're so welcome. I'm so glad I could share these videos with you. And to share my books with you. And hopefully next week we will be back with... Uh, what's the week? Oh yeah, no. Michael Clark is amazing. He's one of the best authors. And everything's so like accessible. For me, the one of the biggest problems with karate books is a lot of them are so dry and inaccessible and then we wonder why students don't read karate books a lot of them are not very few people are karate practitioners and good writers i'm of that very very like rare combination of writer and karate overlap but that's because i've been writing since i was what seven my first story was about <laughs> i'm embarrassed to put this on the internet but it's a funny story my first story is about young queen victoria and how she had a bazooka because you know kids are obsessed with bazookas and I haven't stopped writing since. So and maybe one day I'll have a book that I can put on the shelf. But for now, we're working on YouTube and working on growing our dojo. And maybe one day when I have a flock of young instructors to take over for a month, so I can go right, I'll go right. But before, until then, you have our undivided attention on YouTube. We'll see you next week with a proper edited video. Thank you so much for joining my live stream on a random Friday afternoon. Um, Sensei Jagger sends his regards and we will see you hopefully this time, next week, maybe 2 o'clock.
knowing you're a writer, you need to publish us a karate book. I will, Jake. I've got some ideas on what I want to publish. I'm thinking of publishing an actual dojo manual to try to share my knowledge on running a dojo. Uh, or even just, you know, karate wife, hard life. Um, I, think, I don't even know who, can, who coined that term. Terry, I'm always excited to see your emails. Please send me your martial arts book list. I think that's a wonderful idea. We can um, share it with the world. I'd love to see how many of those books I've already got. I say I. <clears throat> I'm married into this collection. It's always an ulterior motive. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you for your time. Take care. Be safe. Look after yourselves. And we will see you on the channel next week. Have a lovely, lovely weekend.